Peace and welcome everyone to What's Up Rody? How you doing? I am Noelle Jordan, creator and executive producer for What's Up Rody? In my career, I am a live event and touring lighting designer and stage manager. What's Up Rody was created as a safe space for the 12 million strong live entertainment and theatrical professionals. This is a place for us to come and talk it out. Talk about how this global pandemic has impacted not only our careers and our lives, but essentially our mental well being. Whether we're missing the life, missing the road, the stage, or looking for new careers, this is the space where we will talk about it. Today, we are joined by another amazing panel and mental health advocate. Again, I would like to encourage everyone to engage in the live chat here on Protest Party TV. In today's episode, we're talking about American music festivals. Woo. Our moderator for today is April Sam. Hey, Miss April, how are you? How are you? I'm good. I, I want to thank you so much for, you know, putting this awesome platform together for us. Like if it wasn't for you, where would we be? Because this gives us a great opportunity to really talk about the things that we need to do, that we need to discuss, Thank you. right? Also, nice shirt. Thank you very <laughs> you much. Thank you. That shirt today. thank you very much. And I want to thank your awesome team. Thank you to Protest Party TV for your hard work and this amazing platform. We're very happy to be a part of it. Just a reminder, here on Protest Party TV, there will also be live B-roll footage above us throughout today's discussion. It will not interfere with the discussion. So let's get into it. What's up, Rowdy? How are you doing? Today, we're going to be discussing the impact that COVID has on our American festival experiences from here on out. I have an amazing, amazing panel. In fact, so amazing. We got Hayes Amaze, <laughs> drummer, live show, recording, and touring artist. I got Sis Banzi, audio engineer. I have Brittany Brooks, drummer and back, backline tech. David Sampe, mental health advocate. Derek Lewis, festival consultant and Grammy award winning sound engineer for the Experience Live album by Yolanda Adams. Woo woo. And we also have Christopher Play Martin, a man who needs no introduction, an actor, podcaster, and rapper, noted for being half of hip hop duo Kid and Play. And might I add, Ola Ola. -e. So thank you all for being a part of this amazing panel. Are you all ready to get started? Yes, ma'am. Yeah? All right. All right, so my first question, I want to know how has the pandemic affected you all in not being able to work, play, perform, and join go-to festivals? So who wants to start? I'm a, I try and exercise right, chivalry whenever I can, so ladies first. All right, who wants to go first? I'll state the obvious. And Financially, I'll say it's been the the most impactful. It's been actually set out actually on the tour, and it was canceled about three days prior to the first date. So, thank you, COVID. <laughs> wow, that's frustrating, and I think that we all have been there. All of us have been there, where we and where we're losing so much money. Um, who else wants to talk about what they've been experiencing? I like go. I said, ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no way. You're not talking? April, you don't want to answer your own question? Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll definitely say, uh, I'll definitely say um, it's took an impact. Um, definitely, it's had an impact on me. Um, you know, just seeing pretty much all the dates on your schedule for that year, just being like, and just washed away and it's just like you know just at the beginning of the year we're so excited when we first get the schedule and things like that we're like oh about to be here let me go ahead and hit up my friend see if they want to link when i get down there you know that's for me because i'm i'm sure i'm younger than y'all but you know i'm just like 
I, I was excited, you know? <laughs> okay, so I want to take a moment to mentally curse you out for that one, but continue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, um, just, just being excited and kind of being like shot down. But um, I just know that there is something greater in the works um, after all of this. So, you know, I, I try not to look too down on it and, you know, not, not always being out and not traveling and things of, of that nature has definitely allowed me to dive deeper into my craft. Um, as y'all, well, as y'all might know, I am a drummer. So it, it's allowed me to really, really just dive into to the inside of what my instrument actually is and, you know, just what it means to to play music. Mm -hmm. so. Where are you from? Where are you from, Hayes? I'm from the DC, Maryland, Virginia area. Okay. And yeah, that's that. <laughs> Fizz, what about you? Well, with me, um, it's been, it's been for the work end of it, I've been able to maintain because I was able to shift over to the, to the virtual side. And, um, We've been blessed with all these houses of worship in Chicago. I'm out of Chicago, based out of Chicago. It was a heavy um, church church town. And production has changed to a whole nother level as far as sound engineering and video production when it comes to the virtual. So it's like, it's a whole nother game. So I was, I'm, I've was i been blessed to be able to still work and, and maintain a, 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 um, a financial st stability. But as far as like, <clears throat> the mental thing, it's been kind of rough. This changing, well, we're, we're, we're a creature of, of habit. So changing my habit, like I'm used to traveling, jumping on the plane every other weekend. Um, just the, just the, the rituals of doing that. I miss that, you know, like going and park my car in the garage and chilling before I'm about to jump on this plane. And, you know, just the whole little things. I'm, I'm missing that part of it. But as far as working and everything, I've been blessed to, to, to maintain I can definitely understand that. And so right now, what I'm hearing is financially, we're, we're missing out, you know, um, from a level of exciting uh, excitement, being able to see our friends and from a mental standpoint, um, let's go down to play, play. Um, how are you getting through all of this? Well, <laughs> for me, it was a welcome change. Uh, I'm pretty much a recluse. Um, if I ain't got to be at the party, I'm not at the party. So, you know, the novelty of it at first was a uh, paradise for me because uh, it also gave me the opportunity to be able to um, g immerse myself into things that I am really passionate about. I'm a, I'm a tech geek, anything to do with cameras and anything technology digitally when it comes to cinematography, you know, I'm there. I found prior to the pandemic taking place, um, every time I was about to get in my groove, the groove I wanted to be into, it was time for me to get on someone's plane and to be in somebody else's hotel room. And it, I, I was, uh, I didn't, I didn't realize till I got into the pandemic that I was burnt out. And it was interesting because right before the pandemic took place, it was time for another tour to go on. And everyone loves making money and, you know, earning a living. But at the same time, I was tired. I really, and then there's things I've been working on that I really wanted to. So a lot of stuff that I had secured and, and, and purchased and gathered up and saved, finally, I could put it to use. As you could see, I guess everything that's behind me is just stuff. Except for yeah. Buddy. Hey, Buddy. Buddy. Buddy's knocked out. I just got him from the kennel. That's my dog down there, literally. Oh, wow. So, um, anyway, yeah, so, um, but as I talk with others, uh, it made me more sympathetic and empathetic in regards to those who don't feel that same way or not in that same position. So when Noel approached me about this uh, matter, big shout out to Celine, by, Celine, by the way, um, is that, um, you know, I thought this was like, wow. You know, I had already been thinking about it somewhat before, speaking with personal friends, others. I know six people who died from the coronavirus as well. Uh, some of them pretty close. But um, 
to, to hear about the effect that it has on others outside of your circle, uh, it, it's really something. So I'm glad and I, I appreciate the invitation to be a part of this, to lend whatever I can to help bring some kind of positive inspiration, encouragement and edification in someone's life and world to be able to uh, realize what one of the gentlemen just said, forgive me for not knowing the specific name, but definitely something good is going to come out of this if you're in the right headspace and the right place for it, spiritually. I agree. So, yeah. I agree, and I thank you for that. Um, I'll move over to Derek Lewis. What do you, how are you getting through? It, 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 it was a rough start because I had, like everybody else, had a, I had a really nice schedule that was lined up. Um, with major events, you know, that I've been doing, like commencements and some festivals and stuff that I do annually in consulting. So all of that stuff just sort of like literally just went off the table. And it took a minute to just really kind of wrap my head around all of it. But, you know, I pulled it back together. I'm like, okay, what's next? Because we have to move on. When you stand there, it's, it's kind of waddling that you just sort of like pull yourself down real fast. So I had to get get my head back in the game. Okay, all right, what's, what's the next best thing? What else do I do good after this, you know? And right. I started doing um, consulting with churches, helping them. They want to, with, during the pandemic, a lot of them are looking to start adding video and audio equipment. So I've been doing some installs, some consulting on some of those things. So, you know, I've been, you have to get creative with it. And so it's, it was been, it started out rough, but it all kind of smoothed out and come together for me. So. Uh, on the other side is I think that I believe strongly that it will get not just good, but it'll get better than what we had right now. Mm. I think we all can agree uh, when it comes to that. And that moves me on to my next question, which I want to direct to you, David. Um, and the main reason I want to direct it to you is because I want to know what tools that we can all use individually and collectively to get through these trying times. That's yeah. just you know, with everybody saying, we all have to adjust. I'm listening close. I'm listening close and I'm hearing clearly. You know, I, I come from a place where, you know, it, it's like, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an energy guy, right? I believe, in, I believe in the power of energy. I believe in, I believe that's the only thing that is truly real. And if you, it's, it's almost like if, um, if you put your energy in the right place and you, and you just solely focus on your energy, being at a good place, then everything else in your life will fall directly into that. Uh, it's almost like you, you have to put it first. Um, I, 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 I was just talking, I think I was saying this to Noel just the other day. Um, we deal with, um, we, we really don't, how can I say this? When you project into the future, that is what they call anxiety. When your mind is always thinking about what's coming next and that anxiety is just driving you. And when you project into the past, that is what they call depression. Your mind is always constantly delving and diving on what went wrong and trying to correct something that you can't. But when you focus on your breath, there's a certain thing that happens is you, you find yourself in the absolute now moment. And I'd like to ask everybody, how many times in a day do you really concentrate and focus on the fact that you are breathing? I mean, rarely people do that. Rarely do we even think about it because it's just such an auto, an, an auto response. We don't think about this, these things. But if you focus your mind there and just put it there for that split second, no longer are you trapped with anxiety of the, of the future and no longer are you concerned about things in the past. You're in the now moment and you have that absolute clarity. And so that is, I can't tell you how many times a day that I focus on the, just the, the fact of the breath, the duality of that. And when you focus on that absolute duality on that give and take, you're in that moment so for me that's that's what i do that's one of the things that that I, I i i try to teach in in any of the courses that i'm giving and talk to my clients about is just acknowledging that moment for the clarity that you need to move forward 
So I don't you know, know if I answered your question, but. Uh, no, you actually did. And I, I'm going to add to that. Um, I, I've been reading a book that is called How to Think. No, it's called Think Like a Monk. Hmm. And one of the things that he says in the book is that you have to learn how to breathe first. He said the first thing that he learned it, when going to monk school was how to breathe. Now you think, okay, I've been breathing since I got here. <laughs> but he said, no, you actually have to learn how to breathe because when you're stressed out and you're, and you're anxious, if you focus on your breathing, you can elim eliminate a lot of that. Yeah. So thank you for that, um, that feedback. And I think that all of us can, can utilize that. Um, I want to direct this question to Christopher Plain Martin and Derek Lewis. What do you all feel makes a successful American festival? So who wants to get started? Uh, I'll, right, I'll, I'll take, take it. <laughs> Derek? Well, for, for one, and I've been doing festivals for 25, 30 years and, and building them from scratch. So the one thing that I know it's all about is all about the experience. It starts with the experience from the time somebody, what makes them want to come to it. So you have a lineup. Once they get to the venue, your layout, um, the experiences of coming in, everything from how long you got to wait in the line, how's your security, how's your parking. There's a lot of different elements that go into what make a successful um, festival. So some festivals or some venues are self-contained where, you know, everything is laid out for you and you just got to manage it. Some venues you got to build from scratch. And when you do that, you get to be a little more creative in how you create that experience. You know, so the first thing I would say, it starts with the experience. And then from there, your entertainment, your sound, your lights, the wow factors, it's all of those things that go into it. So a lot involved, um, but you, it you starts with much, the experience. You pretty much create the experience first and work backwards. Am I understanding that yeah. correctly? Correct, yeah. Awesome. Um, you know, I've been accused and probably rightfully so of being an overthinker. And when you ask that question, the first thing that hit my head is a lot of times what I'll use in a, in a business strategy is that we can all, how many of us, it's uh, seven, where are we at? Eight. Um, we could all have this master plan and call it blue, but it's all based on the color blue. And we all are excited because we said blue. Everybody knows blue. So we all have different things to do to, we have to leave each other to go out on assignment to make Operation Blue a success. We all go our individual ways. We come back together. Operation Blue is take, has been launched and we failed miserably. And we don't know why because we all know blue but finally we did something we didn't get a chance to do or take the opportunity to do because we assume everybody knew, knew blue. Well, we all spoke finally come to find out April, you were thinking light blue. Noel, you was thinking sky blue. Someone else was thinking Navy blue and that one little thing alone to be a thing that throws things off. So I say all that to say that when he said, when you asked a question about American, the first thing that hit my mind is what's our definition of American? You know, because with, if we're not on the same page with what that means, not only to ourselves as a group to put this American festival together, we can do some kind of advertisement and do all kinds of stuff that won't hit the same note for others that would be interested in, oh, they're speaking my language. That's what America means to me. They wouldn't think this out loud, but it's a subliminal thing. So again, going back full circle to saying I can be an overthinker you know, my thought would be, what's our definition of American, especially now? And to give a festival, and when I hear festival, festival to me means celebration. What are we celebrating? Because it doesn't seem like there's much to celebrate right now. So I don't know if I ever thought, overthought it. That wasn't the question, but that's what came to mind, and I'm spiritually led. No, no. So there was a bit, over, a bit of overthinking there, yes. But what I am, I'm also actually hearing kind of the same thing. Like, Wait a minute. Why was there a little bit? Why was there a little bit of overthinking? Help me, black well, woman, to help me if I do fail. In oh, I didn't to say that that was what a did failure. What did you mean there was a no, little no, no. bit of overthinking? 
I will never, never say that that was a failure. I don't think that any, it, I don't think thinking or overthinking is a, is a failure. And I don't think failure is negative. Um, I do think that when it comes to overthinking, it's like we can put so much into something, right? Mm -hmm. And then the, the festival never happens because we're constantly trying to figure out the color blue. Whereas um, what I'm hearing, what I'm hearing from actually both of you, when we focus on the experience, you're trying to figure out what the experience should be. And Derek is saying, okay, well, I know what this particular experience is. So this is what I want to create. So I, I'm hearing kind of the same thing when it comes to the experience. It's just for you, the experience is now we have to figure out what the color blue is, where in, uh, to start off, blue is the experience. Am I making sense? No, you are. I was just stating that's something people, when people in the planning stage, that there would be take, it would be well to take time to get into some dialogue about oh, what agree. this thing is really all about. And like I said, for me, my idea of American or America can be very different from someone else's. And even to the point of what artists we want to have performing for it. I could turn around and say, I want a public enemy or somebody angry. And someone else could say, no, I want somebody that expresses joy and talks about the great things of America. Mm -hmm. And now the diversity could be great or whatever, whatever. So that's just me. You know what I'm saying? That's why I live alone. Oh. <laughs> so if I, I, if I may, if I may, please. if I may. So, so Chris, I, I understand what you're thinking, but please keep in mind that when I, when I say about the experience, one of the things that I do with my clients or whoever it is, we go through all of that process, what kind of music, what format we have. So when I, when I do that, I'm not just off the top of my head, and I'm not saying that you say that, but we, we definitely sit down and, and brainstorm on what type of, is it going to be a jazz, is it going to be R&B, is it going to be rap, it's, and I've done all different formats, do EDM. If that's the format they want, then I'll create that environment for them. So it's, it's just, when I said the experience, it has to do with as well, very much the format, the style of music, and what people are going to experience or what they're looking for coming to that format or that style of festival. No, and I believe you. I believe you. I, I, there, was, there was no indictment or anything on what you said. Oh, no, no, no. I was just saying coming from when she, when she first said it, that was the first thing that came to my mind. I thought, think if we were to do that, we'd be a great team. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just saying that is just yeah. my take on when she brought that about with America being in such question right now. That's all. It's all good. Okay. Gotcha. So I would like to just make a point that we, uh, in 2021, that we're going to have a festival that Derek Lewis and Christopher Clay Martin are going to be putting together. So I want to thank you all for that in advance. Um, oh. I want to direct this question to Sis, Derek, and Brittany. It's the two-part question. Number one, have you ever worked with or under a festival stage manager who didn't know what they were doing? And how do you think the position will be affected pro, uh, post COVID? Personally, I, I can't say that I've realized, um, and maybe I have, and I was just too green to realize that they didn't know what they were doing. But um, no, I feel like I've been blessed to work with some pretty, pretty decent people that's been able to like kind of school me along in the, pro cause I was kind of thrown into the world of production, like being behind the scenes. I was a touring drummer before and um, was thrown a job. Shout out to Maceo Price. Um, threw me in as a backline tech. Like I'm a, I'm a drummer, but he threw me in as a backline tech doing drums, keys, and DJ setting up all of their stuff. So, and it was for a major tour and I had no experience doing it. So thankfully, um, I was working with people who was able to show me this is what you do, this is what you don't do. I know you're used to being on the other side of this. So, um, no, I haven't worked with anybody that didn't know what they were doing that I knew of. How do you um, feel Let me think about the two. Oh. Take them here. Sorry, say that one more time. Oh, I was asking, how do you think that it's going to change pro, uh, post COVID? Um, as far as the stage manager, stage managers and, mm -hmm. and festival managers, mm -hmm. um, I think, the, I think the safety part will, will take a huge shift. I think there'll be, there's going to be, cause festivals are known for just everybody just kind of meshing and being all together. I think that's really what's going to be the 
main difference is figuring out how to keep people socially distant mm -hmm. and still have somewhat of that same experience. Understood. What What do you think? Um, what do you think says? I worked with <laughs> throughout my years. I don't want to throw nobody under the bus, but I worked with several um, production managers, stage managers, so called that wasn't up to par. Um, and at that point in, in our game, it's a team effort. So even if the stage manager, production manager is not up to par, we all pull together. The show has to go on in show business. Um, so we're going to, we're going to have a good show regardless. So it really never really affected me per personally. I, you know, it made me a stronger engineer slash, you know, stage tech or whatever I was doing at the time. But, um, yeah, I've, I've seen a couple in my days. <laughs> and I think in the, in the future, I think where we're going is, it's gonna be slim in production as far as jobs and things. And I think it's gonna be, a lot of things gonna be weeded out. And it's gonna be, a lot of people are gonna be trying to get into the field while a lot of people's not coming back to the field. So, I think it's going to be kind of tight. So you got to kind of be on, on, on point when we get back in full swing. Of things. I call him the voice. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> hey, what are you thinking? So, so, I mean, I, I, I've been doing this for a while. So yes, I've been around stage managers that I didn't hire though, that I came in on a gig and I had to work with. And once you realize that they have their shortfalls, you help them. Like my man said earlier, it's a team effort. So you, nobody wants to let the show fail because of somebody's incompetence. So you're going to do your best to help save the day. You don't want it to fail because then it's, then everybody fail. So I would, I'll pull them aside and go, hey, man, this is what you do. This, or the young lady, this is what you do. This is what you don't do. You help them. And, and that's what it's supposed to be sort of like. You, you, you always want to pay forward, you know, like, hey, let me help you with this. Yeah, I know you, you know, you're green at this. You might've got thrown into this and had no idea what you're getting into, but this is what you need to do. Let me help you with this. And you have the ones that will act like they know what they're doing. So when, when they do that, you just go, hey, have at it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, let, you let them, you do your part to make sure that what you're doing don't fail. And as much people is around you, but if somebody doesn't want to help, you can't make them take it. And, and, and on the other side of this, um, I think the industry is going to come back stronger than ever and it's going to be even more competitive. And my man said, some people are going to be coming out of the game and there's a lot of people going to try to step into it. And yeah. so the, the people that are in it now, we have to continue to perfect our craft and stay on top of our game. Like, you know, we said earlier, it's like I've been doing more reading and more researching on stuff and following up on things that I haven't had time to do. So now I make, I make better use of my time reading and catching up on things that I've been too busy catching flights and jumping on cars and you know all the all the all the things that go with it so um understood i can go on and on no i i appreciate your feedback um this one is going to be directed to stiz directly how do you feel that sound check is going to differ post covid well of course now um equipment as far as like microphones and everything I'm gonna have to be checked. Bring, people bringing their own mic. Every every artist is gonna want to bring their own mic microphones in. Um, you can't have your, your your crew with you at sound check. It's gonna be limited people on stage. Um, and and I say this to say, in a larger scale of things too, because it's I, I've been seeing productions on a smaller scale that's been a little bit laid back. But when we talking about these 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 um arenas and them type of tours i think the sound check like we're gonna have to come in earlier mm -hmm. than what we normally do and start instead of starting sound check around one you might have to start around 11 because you don't have to clean everything make sure everything is clean um it, it's definitely gonna be different when we get back it's definitely gonna be different uh, yes, uh, sadly, that is very true. I've been watching a lot of performances online, and it frustrates me a little bit to see how people are just passing the mic around so freely. Um, it'll be, you know, at least eight people on stage, and they're literally passing one mic around. So that's a little concerning. Derek, what do you think will be the biggest uh, challenge 
when it comes to gaining sponsors post COVID? Um, it's getting people to buy back into this knowing um, one, as we start back at in the industry, you're not going to be able to put the amount of people that you used to be putting in the venues. So, you know, for a sponsor, they want to get how many eyeballs they're going to get, how much people they can attract, you know, so that's going to be a challenge. And they're going to have people that's going to want to get in on the bandwagon early so that they reestablish themselves back into it. So it has a pro and a con to it. I don't have the exact answer, but I know that it's going to be some challenges with it. And, and sponsors are going to have to like make a, they're going to go with the, the known entities as opposed to the unknowns, because there's a lot of things that are going to change with the Live Nation and AEG and all those guys who, well, you know, they're crumbling right now and they got to regroup. So where they will kind of have the, the, the main lion's share of all the major events going on, that's going to go away and it's going to start becoming departmentalized into, as we do back in the, you know, in the early days where you had promoters in each region, it's going to go back to that. And that's going to make it a little easier to sell as opposed to where it's just Live Nation running everything and you had one or two other little promoters that could barely get, you know, get, get any kind of um, sponsorship because these guys took over everything. So that's going to change, definitely. And it's going to take a while before Live Nation, if they ever get back to the point of really trying to monopolize, which they did for a little while, the whole uh, platform. You know, so and I tag on that a little bit. Yeah, so like, like, like he was saying, the way I see the industry is going, is, is, it's going back to the grassroots. I know here in Chicago, uh, it's a lot of things happening, but it's not major things. Meaning like, for down the street from me, it's a band that plays on, on somebody's porch every Thursday night. And then it's an empty lot across the street where everybody comes out and it's 50 and plus. And this is every week and it's packed. So I see the industry going to a smaller, it's like, like he said, like the smaller promoters are now be able to come back. It's a smaller thing now because of this COVID-19. Nobody want to be packed and there, no, nobody wants to be accused of, you know, overdoing it so you see a lot of these small even with the webcast thing was really working now it's not just doing the webcast but doing a couple people in the room to get the live feel still and and and, and you still you have the live people and you got about 30 40 people in the room but you're doing it you're doing a, a simulcast and you're webcasting it out and, and the artists feel good because they, they get the response from the from the live people it doesn't feel like you're just in a, a studio just doing it by yourself so that's what I feel like the industry is starting to shift to now, especially here where I'm based at. It's like smaller, smaller, still productions, but smaller productions. So even with the festival thing, I don't know how, but we still have large festivals or would be smaller type of things going on where it just might be two, a couple bands playing instead of 13 bands playing and with a smaller group. So that's how awesome. the street parties uh, or, or street festivals the way that they exactly. used to have them today. Exactly. Um, so I'm, I want to pose this to everyone. What part of the festival experience do you feel won't be the same? So we just talked about a lot of that, right? Um, we talked about a lot of it just based on the fact that it might go from being a much larger on a larger scale to a smaller scale. We talked about it from a financial standpoint, but um, what do you all think is going to be the biggest challenge? So I'm going to actually start with you, Brittany. Um, yeah, I think for me, when as a well, as a player, speaking from being a drummer, I love playing for festivals because it was just something about the synergy that the crowd creates and I think that's going to be like a major it's not going to be there at least not for a while because the crowds can't really just be in it together like they used to be so I think it's just the feeling the vibe like the the sweat like all of that stuff is just not going to be there that's that's what I miss that's what I will miss until it's like that again I, I, I will miss the and same crowd thing. surf one day. That's on my that's on my bucket list. I want to crowd surf, and you can't do that if everybody's separate. <laughs> Please <laughs> allow me to be a part of that. When you're going to do it, just make sure you call me because I want to see that. Okay, hey, okay I'm gonna do it. It's on my list. I'm, I will see it. <laughs> hey, what what what, okay. is, what, is, what uh, do you feel? 
Well, I know a lot of this is when when you're asking like post COVID. When I hear of post COVID, I'm thinking like after like like for may, maybe I'm crazy, but I do think there's gonna be a day where it's just like everything is done. Like all the COVID stuff is gonna be done. And I feel like it's gonna go back to being better than what it was because I know if anybody feels like me, I'm ready to get out there to the festivals. I'm ready to hear other, you know, other performers. And I know a lot of music lovers and they're ready to get back out. So um, I definitely think the, the, the one, I, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to feel any different. Um, I know right now they're doing a lot of, uh, well, not maybe not a lot of, but I've been seeing recently like, driving concerts um so um derek and um chris and any anybody else who who does festivals i'm going to ask a question within the question that i'm answering um how do how is is that okay is it okay if i ask a question okay um how how do you feel about like the driving concerts like do you feel like you can do a driving festival if that makes sense is it possible well it, uh, they're doing it now and it's something that they're doing just as a temporary um out for lack of a better word but it, it, it's not it can't last like that because again you could only put so many cars in a venue and you know and so if you if you're only charging by the car you can come in one car and have 10 people in that car but you're not making the money for the 10 people that's coming in there you're not making money with your vendors. You know, you can't have all the vendors you normally will have. You still have to do a social distancing. Um, where are you gonna where are we gonna fall short is we're not gonna have the big PA system. So you'll have some screens, but you're not gonna have a PA because all we do now is we just transmit, we do a mix and send it to a transmitter and everybody just turn it on in their car. So you don't have all the, you don't have a big sound system anymore, you don't have all those other things that go with it. So there are pros and cons to it. So, you know, the, the, the sound engineers, there's only a couple of guys that can work. You know, you, you know you're, you're gonna have one backline person set everything up and then you go away. You know, so it's the way you normally would have a real production, it's, go, it's, a, it's an abbreviated scale down system that, we're, that they're trying because they gotta put things out there to make it happen. In England, they're doing it where they're setting up all these platforms and everybody's social distance and you could have no more than six people on a platform. All of that's going to get old, you know what I mean? Because there's no way to, to manage the lines at the vendors and all of those other the restrooms, the toilets, all that stuff is going to become a challenge. And Brittany would not be able to crowd surf. Surf that. That's that's crowd surf. <laughs> she could crowd surf. That would be pretty cool, right? If you just <laughs> run over people's cars. I mean, <laughs> no, but um, but yeah. So yeah, in all, uh, I'm not. I'm not too sure of what I would I would be feeling different um you know because my vision um when I look into the future is just that it's going to turn out to be better than how it was um I feel like the adrenaline is still going to be there um I was talking to Noel the other day and um I was just telling her one, one of the things that I miss most about being on the road is sound check like believe it or not I I, I love sound check like I just I it, it's, some, it's something about soundtrack that I just, you know, I just, I just love. I love just, okay, kick, do, 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 and then hearing it come through the house, like feeling it on stage, like you know, it, it's, it's, it, it's a different feeling. So you know, I, I, I can't wait to get back to it. But you know, yeah, that's. I don't like long sound checks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we all agree when it comes to the sound checks don't make them long but make sure that sound checks are mandatory so that part will not change post covid sis what do you feel what do you fear will will um not stay the same uh i fear to not stay the same is the crowd i i, I like the crowd like mm -hmm. i don't want the venues to start trying to half pack i like jam pack crowds i like mm -hmm. I, I like everybody's up on each other I, it's the energy it's something about it when, when everybody's up on each other we got a, a sold out house and or sold out arena or whatever it is 
and, and everybody's feeling it. Everything's on point. The music's on point. The artist's on point. The lights is on point. That's the best feeling in the world to me. Like, I don't want that to change. That's what I, I'm, I'm scared of. <sighs> yes, we are all in agreement on that one. Uh, Derek Lewis. Yes, ma'am. What do you fear? What, well, what do you well, fear? Well, be the same. I, I, first of all, I, mean, I don't I have any saying. fears. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't have any fears about this. I, I, I believe that it will come back stronger than ever, honestly. Um, it's going to take time. It's not going to happen in the next six months. Let's, let's keep it real. Um, but within the next year, I think that the doors are going to open and because they can't, it can't stay like this. There's mm -hmm. no way because uh, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to crash and burn. I mean, we have sound companies that are folding every day now. Uh, you know, you have companies that are auctioning off gear like crazy. It's sad. You know, venues that we all have worked in that are closing their doors, you know, Blues Alley and some other places in D.C., they might not open their doors when this stuff comes back, you know. So there's a lot of venues that are that are they they weren't able to sustain the fact that they can't do their weekly shows or nightly shows and run a restaurant and all those things. And so it's no way that the, the, the industry can sustain itself like this. So they're going to have to open the doors if people are going to live, because it's mm -hmm. not. We have to remember it's when we when we talk production, it's not just the guys mixing, it's not just lights and sound. It's the ushers, the ticket taker, taker the parking lot. I mean, there's a lot of people that, that, touch, that, that touch the show every time it happens on major festivals. There's a lot of people involved for the police, security. You know, it just goes on and on and on. And so all those people, all those um, companies and those type of people are being affected by it. It's not just from the tech side. So we kind of forget about those guys as the ushers, the ticket taker people, the people that clean the venues, maintenance, all that stuff is shut down. So wow. uh, it's got to come back around and it's going to come back around bigger than ever. I believe that. It's not going to happen in six months, people, but it will be back and it's going to come back stronger. I said it. He said it and so it is. Yeah. Now, I want to pose a question to everyone. This particular question is very near and dear to the executive producer's heart. So I want to make sure I hear from everybody on this one, okay? For the next, next generation of uh, festival goers, do you think they will ever understand the true essence of an American music festival like Broccoli City, Coachella, South by Southwest? Why or why not? Yes, I think, and this is, I'm just an optimist. Um, I think much like Derek and Hay said, I think we're going to come back stronger. Um, if not, you know, how we were. So I do think that there will be a time that the, the uh, what is it, Gen Z, I guess that's the, the 20 year olds right now, um, they're gonna get to experience the Coachella and the cells and like all of the, the big, festivals. I think it will. That's just the positivity in me, I guess. I think it will be. Can I jump in? Um, and, and once again, positivity. But there has to be a reality about what truly is going on. Hope is a beautiful thing, but what do you do past that? Like what kind of action do you take past hope? To give you an example, Brittany, um, you know, I'm old enough to remember what, when an album came out, how people, we would all rush to tower, we could rush to tower records and put the big cans on our ears and just have that experience to, to experience an album. You wouldn't skip through an album back in the good old days. You didn't skip through an album. An album was a classic. You listened from track to track and people would wait in line behind you with these big cans on your ears. And that time is forever gone. That time is never going to come back again. As things change, things evolve. And I'd like for everyone to kind of really, when you think and answer these questions, this is a time of evolution. Things are changing. And I personally don't feel like they're going to come back. That's never going to come back again the same. Um, but that doesn't have to be negative. You know, everybody, everybody on this panel seems like they have this innate ability to be able to change and pivot. So 
for everyone is sitting here nodding their heads, you know, change is it, it change can be a negative for some, but for everyone sitting on this panel, it is it, it I think it's gonna be the power for the better. But I really want people to really realistically look at this and hope, like I said, hope is a beautiful thing. But you know, especially if in, 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 in the African American community, you know, we love to get punch drunk off of hope. But let's talk, let's, 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 let's dig a little deeper. What happens if things never return to be the same? And, and I'm so glad, David, you brought that because I didn't want to come across as being the bearer of bad news. Uh, and that's not bad news. It's, it's like in this time, we have a time to, we have the time to reflect uh -huh. and we have the time to take notes and we have time, like a lot of people know me for whatever they know me for, hip hop. But before hip hop, I was a lead and rhythm guitarist. Mm -hmm. I used to play in a band for a very long time and I, I anguished, I was tormented in, at nights and through the days, like when am I gonna make it? I was part of a very young group where we wanted to be that Jackson 5, but in regards to musicians, because we were so young, we were so good at what we did, pretty much being a cover band, mostly for Earth, Wind & Fire, which is greatest group of all times. But anyway, um, where we were so good that bars had us and clubs had us and clubs where we were underage and wasn't even supposed to be there, but that's how good we were. They just made sure we didn't drink anything. But I, I can understand and I can relate. I'm appreciating Brittany with the drums in the back. I hope we get a solo before we get off. But the thing is, is that I didn't make it as that. And then something happened. This thing in 1973 in the Bronx of New York, which would eventually be called hip hop. And I was a part of that evolution, that change where I wanted so badly to be that successful musician. Fast forward to today, what I see now is I see an opportunity for inventors. I see the opportunity for taking a lot of this technology, which sometimes I'm not that crazy about because I love acoustic guitars, acoustic pianos, mm -hmm. the acoustic, but you got to recognize things for what they are. And at the same time, us being able to recognize the fact that we're dealing with new life coming in now, mm -hmm. as far as even human beings that might not even know or relate to anything as far as the live experience the way we knew it. But now as they're coming in and they're getting acclimated to this everything online, which is unfortunate or, or fortunate, what something. can we see as brilliant inventors, musicians, producers, all of that, and really just pay attention to what that window of opportunity and a whole other thing we don't even foresee happening because some people can look at this whole experience as a filter or a detoxing, you know, in regards to the behavior and things that were taking place in these festivals that not everybody came out of it kind of good. You know what I'm saying? I mean, mm -hmm. so there's so many ways we can look at this, but I think I agree with Derek and, and Hayes that it's going to be awesome, but it might not be the way we see it. His ways are not our ways and our thoughts are not his thoughts. Mm -hmm. So I think we just need to take the time to embrace the, the greatness that's about to happen that wants to include us. But sometimes I'll leave it like this. You can have a, a $5 bill in your fist and you're holding on to it so tight. Somebody's trying to give you $20, but they can't give you the 20 because you're holding on to the $5 so tight. Mm -hmm. So you just got to be open and be prayerful. I, I want to thank all of you for your feedback. I know I said I was going to ask everybody because this that particular question was very near and dear to Noelle's heart. But for a, for sake of time, unfortunately, we are going to have to cut it off right here. So thank you all so much for that feedback. And um, yes, hope and reality, you know, will will make sure we'll make these uh, festivals come together very, very, very smoothly. So I want to thank you all again for joining us today on What's Up, Brody. How are you doing? <laughs> you could have been anywhere, but you chose to be here with us. Again, special thanks again to our executive producer, Noel, and your wonderful team. And lastly, we appreciate Protest Party TV for this amazing platform. Next week, we are going to continue on this two-part series where we discuss festivals on an international level. I hope to see you all next week. And Noel, I'm gonna send it back to you, sweetheart.
Thank you, April. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm not sure what else I can say besides thank you so much. This discussion was amazing. It was very insightful. Again, we want to thank uh, Protest Party TV and Erica Hayes and the whole team over there for giving us this platform um, that we're on, that you all are engaging on. And I know April had mentioned before about my shirt. <laughs> and the shirt is from Misfit Bodega LLC um, on Instagram. You can follow them at misfit underscore vintage. That's at M-I-S-F-I-T underscore vintage or at misfit underscore world. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate each and every one of you. Hayes, Brittany, Dave, April, Sis, Derek, and Play. I appreciate all of you. And I can't wait to see you guys once outside is open again. Thank you, my dear. Thank you, Noel. Thank you. And God bless you all. Thanks, guys. God bless you all. Peace,